as I was saying, if everything goes okay, hopefully um, this uh, lab is going to be the last time we're going to have a lecture out, and hopefully we're going to catch up this week with what we had um, uh, with, the, uh, with, with the canceled session that we had at the beginning of the semester. If everything is all goes okay, if not, then <laughs> if the internet gets disconnected, then we'll be in trouble again. And we'll continue uh, making up in our lab sessions. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, before we begin, let me just set my stuff up over here so uh, I can have the poll done over here. Um, just a second. Start a poll. There we go. So, is there any questions about what we have talked about down to this point? I see Abby is sending uh, the question. As I mentioned, uh, you're going to do the two quizzes this week, and I'm going to give it to you. It's going to be open uh, this midnight tonight, and you're going to have uh, 48 hours to do the two quizzes, and then we'll go back to our normal thing and do the quiz in uh, the lab session. So you're going to have the first two quizzes released at 12 o'clock tonight or something like that around midnight and it's going to be open for 48 hours to do two quizzes um, and it's going to be not in person. The, qu the two first two quizzes are not going to be in person but uh, um, then we go back to our normal quiz uh, schedule on the uh, lab session that we are having. Any other question other than that? All right. Okay, so um, uh, we are going to um, uh, just do a very quick review of what we've done last time. Uh, last time we were talking about uh, uh, static uh, uh, classes. Uh, static, uh, uh, sorry, uh, static uh, uh, uses of a uh, uh, very good example of using a, a static variable, and we created uh, a singleton using uh, uh, example that we had for tracer. So essentially, what we have done, we created a class with a uh, um, private constructor, and we create an instantiate function an instantiate function returned uh, a reference of a tracer uh, and inside that uh, instantiate function what we did we created a static uh, object of type tracer and we returned that one because instantiate is static itself it has only one instance therefore the static variable inside instantiate will be unique and anytime it's called the same reference of uh, tracer will be called therefore the tracer uh, the tracer um, class over here uh, will be a singleton and only one uh, instance of it will exist uh, then we talked about uh, creating static uh, methods uh, as utilities for a class that is uh, that the functions are not relative to a specific type of uh, value in a class and we want to use it as a utility so we can create static functions inside the class and carry it as a utility thingy with us. Then uh, we talked about uh, a rule of five. We went through uh, through example of uh, a name class that we created. We created a, a copy constructor and then a copy assignment and we explained that uh, copy constructor and copy assignment they have uh, um, uh, move versions of them too. You can have move constructor and move assignment. The difference is that move constructor and move assignment takes ownership of the other object's data and uh, uh, frees the resources of the other object. Therefore, uh, the, the class takes ownership of the resources of the, of the object it wants to copy. Therefore, it's going to save lots of time. And the uh, uh, syntax for it was very uh, straightforward. We said at any moment when we are doing a move construction, what we will do is uh, uh, first obviously delete the value of the current object, then set the pointer or set the, uh, 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 the 
tag or the handle of the current object to the handle of the next object therefore the, uh, the object we are copying therefore the current object will point to the sources of the other object then we'll break the handle of the target we are copy uh, the, the object we are copying and therefore uh, um, um, the, uh, the action of uh, uh, recreating of the source will not happen and the ownership will be taken as such to call this move construct move assignment inside a, a copy constructor to save time and reuse our sort reuse our uh, um, our code uh, we have to use the move uh, in here and this move that we are doing actually tells to the compiler that the operator that you are calling actually will be the one that is going to be moving so it's going to get a move reference over here so this move essentially extracts uh, a move reference out of the uh, out of the object and forces the operator with the proper uh, signature to be called uh, accordingly and that will be uh, move construction uh, what else um, and you had the example for the uh, for the move done and uh, uh, we explain that uh, when uh, an object is getting created, if uh, um, let me just go through it and explain as it's getting executed. Oh, I have two. What is this? Yeah, we don't need this. Don't save. All right. So we said that. We said that um, having these objects as we have, if I uh, invoke move, uh, the, the, the normal way of assignment between two objects is just a regular copy assignment. If for some reason I want to move the content of one object to another, I can force it using uh, the move. Uh, statement over here so I can say C move a and therefore it's gonna call the uh, the move assignment and therefore exactly what we said will happen which is it's gonna remove the content of the current object assume the uh, content of the uh, object that is being uh, copied from and sets the other one to null and and when we go back well we'll see that uh, Originally, C didn't have anything and A had Fred, and when we moved it, uh, now A doesn't have anything and C will hold the, the Fred. And also, we mentioned that um, the values of a temporary nameless objects are never copied, which actually brings us to something that I wanted to mention specifically to you about uh, L value and R value. We kind of uh, had, had kind of touched it and and explained what is R L value and R value is, but um, I'm going to have a, a, a kind of a more complete explanation of it right now. Let me just go to the weekly schedule and bring it up because over there it has the proper um, uh, setting for it. Let, let me just see if I can bring it up. Yeah, so when we look at the types of objects that we have and any ex expression that we have in any expression, we do have uh, um, a left value and an all value. Now, F value, uh, L value can be generalized to, uh, to what we call a GL value. It's a generalized left value. And then we have a right value. Uh, now, generalized left value could be two different things. It's either a left value, which is just a regular uh, handle for an object that we want to set. So essentially something that occupies memory uh, and it has a handle. That's an L value, which in our case over here could be C at the moment or uh, could be D over here uh, and things like that. So these are L values. Um, and then we have an R value, 
that uh, we have uh, um, uh, what shall we call it um, um, uh, what, what, what do they call it? let me just see if uh, nah, I'm not going to bring those up uh, the R value actually gets two uh, uh, separated into two pieces uh, wh which is X value and PR value X value I'll talk about later but PR value is the actual uh, uh, right value that we have right the a PR value is essentially type uh, a type of uh, uh, value that no uh, specific handle for its memory is uh, set and these are literal values so any literal value that you have is a PR value so L value we talked about R value is actually the PR value that we were talking about which uh, let me see if we have an example so this one over here is a PR value um, and uh, do I have anything else in here hmm. um, no, but uh, mm, let me just write something over here to just show it. So in here, I'm going to say C is set to um, um, PR value. So this is a PR value right now. And this one is uh, what we call an L value. OK, now what is X value? X value uh, is the thing that I always call from uh, 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 OOP244 as temporary nameless object so um, X values are values that are close to their to the end of their lifetime so um, in here uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Um, if I write something like this uh, let me just uh, what do I have over here I have ABC uh, and in here up ABC and let me bring C down and in here I'm gonna say something like uh, uh, B will be set to what is uh, name uh, X value so this is a temporary nameless object as we mentioned so this doesn't have a handle now it can be at right side of an assignment as you see it has no problem we know that it can x values we refer to it as r values now but x values can act like this too i can say name uh, uh, x value that is actually gl value and i can say over here set set to um, some PR value or s set to some value whatever so as you see this has no problem it can be at left side of an ass of, of an assignment it can act like an L value but again it's a temporary nameless thing so a temporary nameless object will get created then it's going to be set to through the uh, copy assignment in this case into a name and then it's going to get destroyed just remember that X values can be at the left side of the of uh, an assignment mm, but um, I don't see the use for it it is possible but it should not be done so X values temporary nameless objects either uh, at right side or left side of an assignment PR values are um, they say that uh, these are things that uh, no memory is uh, um, they are not uh, assigned to memory which is wrong it, uh, there is mem if they are put in a memory but the memory they have doesn't have a handle so you cannot access it they are literal values uh, X values however can be left and right they're close to their death and uh, uh, the um, uh, L values are uh, the normal objects with handle that we can access them uh, are we okay with these three things? All right. So, uh,
yeah this is kind of a tricky thing so I can right over here see out I'm gonna say X val and I do like this it's kind of crazy type of thing to write but I'm writing it anyway see out I just wanted to get executed and I'm gonna put over here and L uh, and let's show BNC2 so I'm just gonna run it make sure everything works properly uh, uh, name <laughs> name yeah everything's good all right so that's that uh, another thing that we mentioned over there that was very important was to point out that because get name over here is actually returning a temporary nameless it's returning an x value in this case because get name is returning an x value we said x values never get copied but uh, they will be just re recycled and reused with a new name so if i had a get name over here and get name comes and creates a name and returns the reference of the name when the reference of the name is uh, when this um, uh, x value is returned the constructor of d wants to copy it then it says sees as an argument and then a temp, uh, an x value is coming in and says why do i create a new one i don't need to do that i'm just gonna uh, um, assign it to whatever i want so that which is d in this case in the other case over here when you have an x value at rights of an assignment and d if the type of d carries the move constructor automatically the move constructor will be called because now the compiler sees what you have is an x value it's just about to die why waste it and i can recycle it and using the move constructor move assignment it will actually recycle it yes we'll see yes um wait so why is it doesn't the move constructor work for like um for uh line 85 or is it because like because like uh, uh, it is like a temporary object that's gonna die right so that means shouldn't that be called or do we need to use a move move a uh, statement for that that's the thing none of them is called none of them is called that's the beautiful thing about it think about it think about compiler it. recognizes compiler that this is an object this that is an exists object and doesn't that have exists a name. and doesn't have a name why move anything i'm just why gonna move give it anything? the name i'm just gonna give it the name d done d done you wait could you scroll up to your get name function I just want to see something. Wait, if it was returned by reference, then the move cons the move constructor would call it, right? It's a local variable. variable. It's a local variable. Okay. If I had name, if out, I had here, name out here, or if was yeah. if it was let's put it this way, if it was a static one, if then yes, you could return a reference. Because then that's not an x value then anymore. That's not an x it value becomes an r value. It becomes an r value. Yeah. Sorry, L value. Sorry, L value. If I did it like this, yes. then it would be an L value. It's not an X value anymore. Because it's returning a reference of something that is not going to die. So uh, let me remove it because that's going to open a can of worms, which I don't want to see. All right. Um, anyone else? Uh, yeah, I do have a question. Um, it's about the move uh, operator. So I see that you're using the move operator for L values. Uh, but uh, what yes, is you can enforce it if you don't yeah, use it, it. It's 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 not gonna. Get, and that, that's not the one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the one. Yeah. You yeah. Can that's enforce right it. You can enforce it to use it, but it won't if you don't. Yeah. But what is the default value for move? Like, if you don't instantiate a uh, or create your own move constructor and operator for the class, then and the regular you... operator will be called. So and what? How does the record? It, there's no problem. Does... It's there's no problem with you using a regular operator with that. It's gonna use it and treat it as a regular object. The only problem is that then you're gonna waste lots of memory through allocation, lots of time through allocation and deallocation. Nothing's gonna go okay. wrong. See, I want everybody to understand this. Rule of three guarantees that your program will run flawlessly, with no problem. 
Rule number five guarantees that your program runs flawlessly with no problem as fast as possible. Ah, okay. So it's a for efficiency, it's not for efficiency. For of course, it's for efficiency that it's added. Otherwise, lure of three would suffice. Okay, okay. That's why I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, it's instead of keep copying information when the information doesn't need to get copied, I just pass it around. That's obvious. It's like it's like you want to borrow my book. And I'm going to say, I don't need it anymore. I'll give you my book. If I don't, then you have to go on a Xerox machine, copy 900 pages. You follow? Yeah, I follow. I it's follow. Just, That's the only reason. Yeah. The only reason I was asking is like, if the, if the, uh, if the default uh, of the compiler is going to make a correct move operation, correct move constructor, I was like wondering why would you bother m implementing it, and then you answered me by for efficiency, yeah. not for correctness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, Wilson, you had a question. Okay, so the reason I'm just curious for the reason why um number line number eighty five, it doesn't actually like call the move constructor is because like the object being created in the get name function is a local variable which is like dying in the function, but like it's not technically a temporary object let's call it what it is means... it's an x value it's an x value it's a temporary value an x value is x an expired value a value that is about to get expired because it's about to get expired it's not going to waste its time instead of expiring it it's going to just give it more time with the handle that is putting on it uh. It's a disposable thing. That, that, that X value is about to go away. Why copy it? I'm just going to take it. So the X value isn't a temporary object? or It is a temporary object. It is an object that is about to die. When I call it temporary nameless, it was from OP244 because I had to mention to students that this object is a temporary thing and comes and goes. But the correct term for it is, is an expired value. It's a value that is about to die. All right, so, and it's not going to be used because of that fact. I can reuse it. I can recycle it safely. If I don't, it's going to go to waste. Well, in one of your previous lectures, um, that was recorded, it said that like temporary objects, um, will be when temporary objects are assigned to like, um, like a new object, like it's being created, uh, with like a temporary object, like it said that uh the move constructor is called that's uh yeah, yeah th this is the one uh here not when creating that when passing it as an argument you are passing get name as an argument of a function you are not creating anything okay and so okay so but for constructors like if that were the um, for move constructors, you'd have to use like the move keyword then, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, give me a minute. I'm just gonna take a little bit of a picture. Sorry. Okay, got it. We're good. All right. I was a little confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. All Thanks. Right. Okay, no problem. Okay, so again, you see this ginormous code. We're using F11, walk through it, and everything's gonna go crystal clear, one by one to see what it is. Okay. So that's the review that what we had from last time. Now I'm going to just lay to rest and I'm going to continue with templates. So um, let's uh, let's save this as um, a uh, review. Re review. Review. Uh, uh, L value x value and pr value okay dot cpp all right and this is gonna come up over here all right and this is gonna come down i just want to have that ready so i can where do i put it let me put it over here and this one over here Perfect. All right.
All right. So okay, and this we don't need. All right. So uh, yeah. So we have. Uh, um, we had uh, so this is uh, this is a review of last session and also talk about uh, left values, uh, expired values, and pure right values. So these are the ones, okay? Uh, and this one is so. This one is let me get a pure right value, okay? All right. Okay. Mm. Have my cheat sheets ready. All right, that's the one. Okay, uh, we want to talk about templates. So, yeah. So, let me just take these away. I don't think I need them. And. All right, so we talked about templates last semester, and we said that when we have a function, we want to actually uh, create temp uh, create uh, uh, functions out of what we have. Mm, what's going on here? Uh, well, this should work. No, I won't. So let's go with that. T pointer. TCC target. Target. Okay, so we have created something like this and yeah so we created something like we created a template and uh, we said if we want to swap values between the two things we create a function template and function templates essentially work like this we, we write template type name t or we could type over here template class t this is the old version the other one is new version they're both exactly the same absolutely no difference so this uh, essentially based on the type of the call that you have for your template based on the type of the call that you have for template it will uh, generate the function for you at compile time and so you can use it so essentially when this swap is called and you have an address of a double pass then it's going to put a double over here with an address and so on and so forth and this one is an address of a double and it does the same thing and when you want to swap characters then it's got to be address of a character and it works perfectly for both of them so essentially when you are walking through this you are going to walk through the same template twice but the difference is that the first time it goes through it the type over here will be a double and this has actually become a double value and, and and it goes through it and the next time it comes to it oops i went jump through it a little too quickly the next time it comes through it it was um, was it control f10 yeah the next uh, the next time it comes through it it's going to go and uh, th therefore th uh, it, the type now is going to be a character and you're going to have a character over there created and it swaps between the two characters and as you see now it's a character so so templates for functions were created like that and it uh, helped lots of time uh, it helps us uh, to save lots of uh, code and uh, uh, this is true shape of polymorphism because you simply mention what the logic is and the uh, uh, function is generated for you at compile time whenever you need it are we okay with this quick review of uh, op244's templates <laughs>
all right but keep that in mind that when you are actually creating a template so in here I'm going to say 244 templates oh that a is a little too big right now um, the next thing we wanted to to know was um, how we can actually have a special type of function created when we want to do some kind of a uh, logic that the, the, the function itself is the same but the logic in the function will not apply to those two two types um, the example that we had for it was to create something like uh, uh, a template to for example find maximum of uh, uh, two values so larger of two values if I do something like this a template for it for all primitive types is that if I want to find out the, the maximum of two values I have to put over here uh, type A and type B then I'll do like this and through a, a, a conditional operator I return the big one and that becomes the the <coughs> uh, what should we call it the template that I want to actually use to um, uh, find the maximum between the two uh, integers but if I wanted to actually do this for uh, character pointers then what can I do so because if I want to actually write the function that finds the maximum between two uh, two strings the function will be written something like this I, I'm gonna say character maximum something like that and go through it okay so this is uh, what I need to do to actually make this thing work uh, first of all I can just do this which means if you create uh, an overload as we talked about in OOP244 overloads always have priority uh, towards templates so if if I want to find a maximum of two strings so if I have str1 of character s1 being abc and character s2 being C, D, e, F, G, something like that. If I want to find out which one is the bigger one, obviously I'm going to need over here C string. And that silly CRT thingy, but I'm not going to compile it. I, if I say over here, like C out maximum, maximum, let's call it max so I don't have to co write too many line, too many things. So I'm going to say over here max. So if I say max of S1, oh, 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 max is already taken. Larger. Or largest. Okay, so largest of two in here, I can simply say largest of s1 and s2 and that would work perfectly because always overloads have priority to, towards templates always overloads have uh, priority towards templates and uh, say if I had um, what should I call it um, uh, a class any type of class uh, let me just write something over here like a very simple class say I have a uh, class container or I'm gonna call it the struct so I can just get over uh, uh, get away with it so if I have struct container and um, uh, and I have over here int va value over here and in here I'm gonna say something like um, um, something like um, you know, what do I write I'm gonna write boolean uh, mm, has more and in here I'm going to get another 
cost container container reference something like that so this container has a function called has more that it's supposed to be written if I write something like this over here if I write something like container container and I write over here largest and container C1 and container C2 in here I can I can uh, do something like a return largest of C uh, uh, if sorry return uh, largest uh, C oh, C has more sorry uh, C1 dot has more and in here that more than C2 and s do something like this pass C1 in that case and otherwise pass C2 so the logic is different because the function is different so if I write these three things it will work perfectly still because the overloads actually uh, uh, get kind of priority through uh, the template but the problem is that it the whole purpose of writing templates is that the function code is not going to get created unless it's actually used so if that's the case how can I make this a special type of template that triggers uh, gets triggered when this type is called the answer is this is how you specialize it so if I want this to be turned to be turned to a special template to specialized version template of this one what I write over here is template and you don't put put any type over here you just specifically mention what this uh, uh, what should we call it what this um, uh, function is actually written for so you are gonna so you're gonna actually whoops jump over here so in here you are writing I want the largest to be for const character reference like that and by doing something like this this is still valid and this becomes a template and it becomes a template for the largest whose type name is only constant character pointer and nothing else and the same thing over here for largest if I want largest to be a specialized version of that uh, uh, for container if I want it to be like that I simply say template and I do like this and in here I'm gonna say for container so now this becomes another specialized version of the template that we have so and you can write any logic over here you want uh, but uh, this becomes uh, a specialized version of the template that you have over here uh, are we okay with this we can always so this is the specialized version of it now uh, having said that having said that say um, I have this um, pa, 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 pa. Um, let me bring back the previous one let's say I have this and I want to um, use largest like this I want to say double a and B and C a and B something like that and or integer a and B and then I have to write over here double let's say uh, C and in here I'm gonna put 10 and in here I'm gonna put 11.0 okay now what if I want to write over here a is set to largest of B and C 
So this would be problem because the largest that I'm putting over here, it doesn't know which one it wants to call. If you want, and you know that you can actually cast one to another, you can force the template to be called by a specific one. So I can say, I want the integer version of this thing to be applied. So you can hard code what type of template you want to get generated for these values. And because one of them is now an integer and the other one is double, because you are calling largest int, the C will be casted to an integer and passed to here and it works the same way. So you can always uh, uh, resolve uh, uh, template function calls, function calls manually. Okay, are we okay with this? All right. So we are resolving function template calls manually, and what else we need to do? All right. So D. That's that. And as I mentioned, always overload comes first. And now we are going to move towards class templates. So any questions now to this point? All right, wow, lots of questions. Oh, sorry, 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 my apologies. Are we okay with what we talked about down to this point? Are we okay with this? All right. Okay, now we're going to get into class templates and see exactly how class templates are done and what can we do and how we can cre create it. For that, what I will use would be uh, an old thing that we have done in uh, OOP244. So I am going to, um, just a second. Just a second. I am going to bring something in here. Copy this and bring it to the solution over. So this we have done in OOP244. We created an integer array. So add existing items. A dynamic integer array in OOP244 to uh, um, uh, to have it dynamically created. So it kind of solves the problems that we have with our uh, uh, what should we call it, the uh, integer arrays that we have. So I created, um, uh, just to remind you quickly of what it was, um, I created this one uh, uh, as follows. So we created a pointer to, uh, um, we create the class called integer array to replace the integer arrays in, in, in C, in C++. And we said we're going to, to create the array, we're going to, um, uh, to create the array, uh, we are going to create a, a pointer to, a, to an integer so we can have a dynamic array over there. We're going to remember what its size is, and we're going to write a function to resize it to whatever size we want it to, to have. Then uh, we create a constructor that uh, by default will give you uh, uh, an integer array of length of 1. We're going to have copy constructor, um, copy assignment as an exercise at home, write the move constructor or move assignments for this. Um, uh, and we have size over here, and we have a couple of uh, operator index operators overloaded for constant access and for normal access, and we had a virtual uh, destructor to destroy the array. Uh, 
the creation of the LA was quite straightforward. If the size is less than or equal to zero, we set it to one and we allocate memory to the size that they wanted and set the attribute to the size that we had. And for copy construction, uh, uh, we created uh, a dynamic array to the size of the, what we are going to copy and we copied every single individual one by one from the one that we are copying to the current one. Obviously the size is uh, set to the size of the other one. For the assignment operator, what we did, what we checked to see if it's not self-copy, then we deleted the current data uh, and followed the exact same thing that we have done over there, which is not a good thing. I should have actually had a function for this. You can actually set it yourself, put these two in a function. The destructor deletes the function, size returns what is the size of the function, operator equal um, with an integer, uh, if the index is less than zero, sets the index to zero. If the index is greater than size, uh, uh, it resizes the uh, uh, object, uh, the the, uh, the the memory to the size that it has. After it's done, it returns the element at the index that they wanted. If it's a constant one, however, uh, first it makes sure if it's negative, it, it sets it to zero, and then it does a modulus to make sure that they cannot get out of here. So this one cannot change the content of the element therefore uh, we are using this method to uh, go through it so if they access it with a constant thing they're going to just loop over it display displays everything comma separated as you see and uh, resize uh, uh, resizes uh, uh, the memory by uh, creating a new size and then going th through the creating a, a temporary uh, dynamic array with the new size that we want to resize it to and then it will go from zero up to m size uh, or the new size one by one copy everything uh, set the size to the new size delete the old thing and set the data to the new one and that resizes it and the operator um, uh, overload prints uh, everything comma separated and that was our dynamic integer array that we created uh, are we okay with this quick review of what we had for an integer array? All right, now that we have this, we're going to take a break. We come back and we learn how we actually convert this thing to a class template that can be used for any integer array in future. I'll talk to you in a second. So um, let's get like five, ten minutes break and we'll come back. Uh, and uh, we'll continue. Any questions before we go? Suggestions? Yes, Wilson. Go ahead. Just curious. Um, so for workshop three, part two, uh, will the submissions be open by tonight or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On Mondays, I always update it. And it's going to be open. Okay. And it's going to go to the thing. Uh, I'll open it up. But if we, if, um, what was um, yeah, I'll open it up and I'll set the due dates as usual to go four or five days yeah. after the thing. So it's going to be open. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, 10 minutes starting now. Please remind me to continue recording when we come back. Continue. Let's continue and see how we can actually um, um, have the classes uh, as a class template. We know how, how we can actually create a class template. Um, I'm going to not only do the class template thingy, but I'm going to convert this thing a little bit to uh, 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 a C++ code instead. Uh, I mean, like an OP345 style of code instead. Um, so, um, what do we do will be this so um, uh, so what we're going to do is this first of all as we mentioned last semester when you create a template for anything and if you want to modularize it to be used later on because the compile the, the templates get generated during compile time you cannot have the bodies of the function inside a CPP file. Everything that a template has to, must reside into in 
uh, 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 what you may call it, uh, a header file. So in here, I'm going to create uh, a header file, and I'm going to add it as, so it's going to be a header file, and I'm going to call it, <coughs> say, dynamic array. So that will be what I have, dynamic array. Now, first I'm going to copy everything that I have from the uh, integer array header file in here. Uh, change the int array to dynamic array. So that's dynamic array. That's copied, pasted in so that's what I have. The next thing I'm going to do over here will be, let me see what else I need to do. I need to have the IO stream included because we have this one. So I'm going to go include uh, IO stream and that's that one. Uh, what is the next thing I need to do? Um, that's good. So that is done. I can close this one. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to go to the int array CPP and I'm going to copy everything I have from the CPP file and paste it underneath this one. There we go. So now everything from the CPP file is copied over here too, and now I'm ready to convert this to a template. <coughs> Save, yeah. Unlike uh, other, um, what should we call it? Unlike other uh, uh, templates that we created with, uh, Unlike all the um, other uh, templates that we created with functions, classes cannot carry signature because class just says class int array, which in our case, let me just replace it right now to nothing, in, not in current project, but it's current document. So in current document, I'm going to convert this to dynamic array. So essentially, this dynamic array of mine that is supposed to be an, an integer of whatever array that I have is uh, uh, um, not going to have a signature, which means if I want to actually instantiate this and just to come um, in here, I'm going to remove the int array completely. Sorry, remove, not copy, remove, remove. We don't want it. And in here, I'm going to go to program and I'm just going to add, include dynamic array. So when dynamic array is created, I need to be able to instantiate it. So because a class doesn't have, so the if I say over here dynamic array, uh, using namespace stds, Yes. If I say over here dynamic array, let's say D, if I do something like this, there is it, there is nothing over here that I can mention how to actually create a dynamic array, array of type integer or of type double or whatever. If I want that to happen as a template, I have to carry the signature with it. So unlike regular classes, templated classes carry the signature of what they carry the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the 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 type that they need to actually create. So if I want this dynamic array to be a dynamic array of doubles, for example, I have to mention double in front of it. Okay. Of course, this is not going to work because I haven't com converted to a template yet, but that's how it happens. Again, because classes don't carry signatures, to instantiate a class template, you have to mention which one you are doing, exactly as if you want to resolve uh, uh, a, a, a function template call 
by adding the signature to it you can actually add the signature to this now let's go back to into the dynamic LA for every scope that I have I need to add a template signature so in here I'm gonna say template and I'm gonna add something like template I'm gonna put over here um, type name let's call it type so that's the type that I want to do also so now this dynamic array of mine is getting ready to get to become a template first of all all the sizes that I have now I know in C++ that sizes don't need to be integer I can actually have a size T for it so I'm gonna use it for that so uh, in here this integer type that data it's gonna be a whatever type that I have so that's gonna be type so the very first step over here is going to be step number one to change the uh, uh, focus focus um, or change the, the type of the I want to say type of what type of the uh, focus of the class to templated type so in here I want to have an array of types so that int will be changed to type and M size I'm gonna change it to size T to just make sure that we understand that that's the size and we know that size T is a C++ thing for anything that is more than zero so that's what I'm gonna do so for resize I'm gonna have size T and for dynamic I'm gonna have size T and in here I do not have this one is returning the size so that's gonna be size T in here the operator is returning an element of the type that I have so that has to change to type the index however is the index so that's size T in here I'm returning a constant element so because it's the element of the array it has to be the type and index again will be size T and other than that I don't see anything that needs to be changed are we okay down to this point now number two change the type of the focus of the class to template the type we did that number two is to change or add the signature add the signature of the template to all the class names other than a the name of the class oh let me bring this down because <laughs> this is not a good place to have it I'm gonna bring it down over here and do it like this and, and also change this comments to C style so it looks better okay so change the type of the focus of the class to the template add the signature of a template to all the class names other than a the name of the class coming right after the template so this one will not get the the signature of the template for but anywhere else um, oh actually I have two more I have um, B constructor names and C destructor name constructor names and destructor names so I need to add the signature to everyone this class is the name of the class coming right after so I'm not gonna touch it I'm gonna come down here 
this is the name of the constructor I'm not gonna touch it this is the name of the constructor I'm not gonna touch it this one is not it's uh, an argument that is being passed so I have to add the signature to it here it is a type that is being passed I add the signature to it here a type that is being passed I pass the signature to it over here this is fine fine this is the name of the destructor I won't touch it and I am all set and done so looking at this now this class is fully converted and ready to be implemented for a template so the and now if I actually come back over here you will see that uh, you don't get any error anymore because now you are saying I want the dynamic array of type double to get created and therefore that's what you see are we okay down to this point all right this size T is misspelled let me correct it all right and then after that you have to add the template for every single scope that you have even if it's a one-liner you see this in here I have O string operator yada yada this, uh, uh, a helper function you have to put the signature of the template and follow the rules which means add the type over there and there you go so it's a single line it has a focus of its own you add the signature to it separately are we okay with this all right explicitly I'm gonna go through every single thing that we have in here and I'm gonna convert it and this repetition hopefully is gonna help you to really understand and go through it so we're gonna uh, see what happens so uh, this one I'm gonna write a template for it so template <clears throat> the first one dynamic array is not a name of a constructor destructor or anything so it has to carry the type then the other one is the constructor accepting an integer that will change to size T because we want to have the size t passed to it in here we are saying if size is less than zero we don't need to make stay less than zero only equal to zero because size t cannot go less than zero uh, let's set the size to one then we're gonna say m data will be new int m size int is the array that we want to create it created so it should be the type that getting created so essentially it creates the size if the size is zero sets it to one then allocate an array of types and put it in m data are we okay with this next one again template type name type the name of the array that is coming first must be templated <clears throat> the name of the constructor would not be touched the argument that is being passed over here is uh, templated then m data will be new type obviously and we I start at zero this is size t because <clears throat> we are comparing it with size d we don't want to get a warning and everything happens right over here as soon as I get to this point I see over here that a type is being assigned to another type what does this line require ladies and gentlemen what does this line require I have one type set to another what does this type require I'm getting good responses very nice very nice um uh, only three people answered no 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 keep going keep going no yeah okay so let's just and the rest of you are not even answering so let me just tell you first what's what's the question 
when you create a template you have to carry a document with the template to say the type that is used in this template requires specific features otherwise the template is not going to work so at any moment you see any type object of of the type that you have is involved in some kind of a special operation you have to document it mdata is a member of the array that you just created so mdata is of type type uh, let me just change all the types to t so i can actually mention it properly so i'm going to put over here t as type uh, replace everything okay so now i can actually talk about it so in here <clears throat> template is of type t the array element is of type t so i have an object of type t being assigned to another object of type t when i have an object of a type being assigned to another object of the same type what will be called a couple of you had good quite answers now you are getting correct answers perfect yes copy construct copy assignment will be called so for this thing I'm just gonna put it over here so later on I can come collect everything copy assignment is what this needs uh, one person said rule of three no not rule of three this is copy assignment copy assignment is required not rule of three I do not know if rule of three is required because you might have something that uh, I don't know you have a scenario that thing doesn't get copied but it can be assigned so you don't know you have to mention specifically what it needs and that's copy assignment so let's do the next one template uh, I'm gonna call it T this time not type okay so the dynamic uh, um, array over here will accept the T that is return value the second one is what owns it again not a constructor and last one not a constructor they all get the signature of the template then the address nothing delete fine m data is equal new it has to be the type t and in here i'm going to have a size t and again i have assignment happening between two i already documented it i don't need to so that's that one so it looks like everything over here is set are we okay with this are we okay with this say yet go ahead iman so i i didn't understand the thing you said about the copy assignment um so like because it's an array right i don't i don't understand why a copy assignment should be called for it okay i have a question class employee okay are we okay with this yeah employee a and b employ if i can type it of course employee a and b okay yeah what is being called in here? The copy assignment. Do you have any doubt on that? No, um, it's no. copy assignment, no. correct? Yeah. All right. How about now? What is being called in here? Again, the copy assignment. Are you are you hundred percent okay that this is copy assignment being called? Yeah. All right. How about now? Yeah. I Again, the it's copy assignment, it's just an yeah. array, but this one is dynamic, right? 
Yeah. You're perfectly okay with this? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go back to the code. What is this? It's a it's a, it's a pointer, pointer to the to the type, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is this? This is like assigning dynamic assigning a dynamic array Beautiful. for us. So M data is a, is an array, correct? Yes. Now M data I is equal to M data I. But it's being called. Yeah, but like M data is like an array for a double, isn't it? Like like for no, example, for no, double. it could be you here. Trains. It's a template. Broaden okay, so, your run, like it could be anything. So the copy assignment of that of that template is getting called, not the copy assignment of the class, right? The copy assignment of the type is gonna be called. Yeah, yeah. If okay, I okay. have over here class train, if I have something like this, now this is gonna be a dynamic array of train, or let's call it like this. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a car, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna call it a car. And now I'm going to say over here, train. So the train dynamic array has many cars. Yeah, got it, got it. Got it? And, yeah, got and it. T over here is a car. And E here, it's a copy assignment of a car, not a train. Yeah. Got, got it. it? Yeah. Perfect. I love that. Okay, good. So that's that. Now let's go for the destructor. We're going to do the same. So template name T. This one is not the class. It's not the constructor or destructor, so it gets the the type. The other one is just the name of the destructor, so we don't touch it. Here it's returning the size of the int, uh, the array. That's a size T, and it it's owned by dynamic array, so that's going to be T. Returns that one. Oh, I forgot to <laughs> put the time uh, template name. Now the operator uh, index operator overload. It returns an element, so it has to be T. Um, it receives uh, uh, the index that size T. And it is a member of dynamic array. It needs the type. If the index is less than 0, make it 0. Impossible. Size T is not negative. doesn't need that. If it's greater than size, resize it. Fine. Everything else seems to be good. Let's go to next one. It's being repeated to the number of things. I know you're getting bored, but but please think with it as I am doing it. I want you to see it so many times repeated so it goes into your, gets engraved into your brains. Now, a template type, it receives uh, a dynamic array operator index that is constant. So it's constant T reference belongs to type and receives a size T. I do not need to check for negative because it is it can never be. This is fine. Again, template. It returns O stream. It belongs to dynamic array T, and it dis it displays something which is fine. Prints the first the the first element of the thing. What is needed in here, people? Again, a type, so because this is, we said operator zero, it means an element of the array, which means an object of type T. Because I have the object of type T involved in an operation, I need to document it. What needs to be implemented here? Oh, what is... <laughs> What needs to get implemented? My apologies. I love it that some people are saying yes. <laughs> Please write it down. What needs to be implemented here? Nope. Somebody said index operator. Nope. Oh, yeah. Irish, you're correct. Sans Sasani, you're correct. Sassini. Oh, I, 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 did I pronounce it properly? The second one, so Sassini. Okay, good. <laughs> My apologies. Okay, Sassini, you're correct.
uh, people who are saying in the uh, yeah actually no Sassini you're not correct I'm sorry <laughs> no uh, um, yeah so I see like some people are saying yeah, yeah so let me tell you what happens when you want to know what happens this is the type remember that and this is uh, OSDR immediately write the signature so OSDR is O stream and then you have this and then you have T this means you are doing insertion operation which essentially means T must be printable on O stream so in here you have to immediately mention that this is uh, uh, OS, uh, T must be printable or insertable into O stream using operator okay because T this is a type that is being inserted into O stream and it needs to be uh, implemented uh, are we okay with this all right now in here in I definitely that's gonna be size T starting from one going up to size I plus plus and this one so I have two different versions of calling operator index operator I actually like this one better for some reason I don't know this is like a yucky for me a little anyway so that's that and returns the OSDR at the end so it seems to be fine and the dynamic uh, resize it belongs to dynamic array int new size is size t it creates a type temp and creates new array of types in it it starts from zero goes up to size or new size whichever comes first the reason we are doing it so the resize can be used to shrink the size of the array and everything's got to be copied from one to another oh uh, and we have to fix something so if new size is equal to zero the new size will be one we don't have a size of zero we'll fix that okay and then after everything is copied new size will be set uh, the old data will be deleted the data uh, will point to the newly allocated memory so instead of temp over here I'm gonna say um, new size so I just go temp in here I'm gonna call it new array okay so the new array will uh, have will have the new size and the new array element will be set to the old one and keeps going like that and everything's good and finally at the end in here I'm gonna create a template I'm gonna say O stream operator yada 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 phrase O stream and then it passes a constant reference of dynamic array of type T into RO and displays it and um, we have ourselves a template that can actually uh, copy assignment uh, insert a bit into that one and that's the only thing that it needs oh and it needs another thing too can anybody tell me what else does it need actually you can actually look look at here and you'll see what else do you think it needs you by looking at this one you should be able to find out that other than the assignment copy assignment what is needed for the type T there might Move. be there might yes go ahead Amir. sorry I was just I didn't know you're gonna put out the poll I was just gonna say move oh no no not move no 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 moving is for the whole array please do it as an exercise uh, to see how it works but tell me what is needed in here I want to see what you're going to see. I've got to give you some prize if you tell me. And I'm going to give it to as many people as give me the right answer. So I'm going to wait for it for like five minutes for you to do.
no ente no no one had gotten any marks yet <laughs> you can write can you give me a, give me some clue yes in this code wherever type t is involved something is required that we did not mention that it must have and if it doesn't have this code is not going to work so the object t the type t the class t that this thing so in this case the class car that we are creating the dynamic array for needs to have a specific type of thing for this template to work and it's mentioned in function resize in front of you five percent to midterm How many of you are using ChatGPT to find out what's the answer? Ten <laughs> percent to midterm. Ten, nine, eight. I think I got it now, but I already submitted. <laughs> you already should say it. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. Omar, nice try. Um, can I take a look at what's already implemented? I just want to... It's right in front of me. What do you mean what's already implemented? No, uh, like the other methods you don't that have been to. already... This is enough. Okay, I'm going to reduce it to 2%. It's in line 95. And you can just say it. The first person who says it will got it, is going to get it. Allocator? Pardon me? The allocator? <laughs> what do you mean by there is no such thing as <laughs> allocator? Just, what is allocator? I just, allocator. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. Like it's not a, a memory allocator, but like that's just new. It's memory <laughs> allocating. How about the replicator? <laughs> Seriously, yeah. this is OP two four four. It had nothing to do with three four four. Okay, default constructor. And did they get example. it? Default constructor. You are creating an array of things without specifying what they need. They need default constructor. They need no argument constructor. No arg constructor or uh, default constructor needed. We are I just mentioned constructor, so am I correct? Huh? I just mentioned the constructor in my answer. You mentioned constructor in your answer. Yeah, just no, constructor no, in the nice board. try. No, <laughs> the, I have a question. Is there anything in C plus plus language that doesn't need a constructor? <laughs> Everything needs a constructor. That's like, there's no argument constructor is necessary for this. I'm sorry, but that's that was the case. Okay, just wanted to well, kind of uh, poke your brains a little, but that's what it is. So um, let me see if there's anything else missing in here. I don't think so. I think that's it. So let's try and use it now. Okay, so uh, let's save it. And so in the th in the documentation, I have to write this thing needs no argument constructor. It needs uh, insert. It needs to be insertable into uh, O stream, and it needs a copy assignment to work. So, and then we're going to come over here and we're going to not class of cars. I don't have any class of cars. I'm going to create different things like um, I'm gonna create double in here. And I'm going to put uh, D and we'll put the size over here. So we're going to go, uh, what do we put? Uh, 50 of them. 
uh, too much. Uh, 50 is actually 50 is okay. And then I'm going to have a dynamic array of uh, of uh, ints, and I'm going to have i, and I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have uh, capital I, and I'm going to make this capital D, and I'm going to have five of this. So I'm going to say four i set to zero i. Uh, a four int i set or int i i set to zero i less than d dot size and i plus plus i'm gonna set uh d i yes uh iman go all right, so about the default constructor, if it doesn't have a default constructor, does that mean that it's going to give us an error? Yes. Oh, OK. Yeah. I thought it's going to allocate, like, isn't it going to allocate memory as much as needed? And like, no, I'll, you know? I can, I can, let me just see what, what did we have? We have a class over here. What was the class we had? Um, we had, oh, we had, let me just see what class did. Do I have something that I can use in here? Hmm. Um, no, let me do it right now. I'm going to say class container int uh, m data, and I'm going to say over here. So the requirements for it was, I'm going to say over here a public. Okay, so the requirements was assignment operator. It doesn't need, because there's no resources in here, it needs to be insertable into um, the, uh, whatchamacallit, O stream. So in here, I'm going to call um i'm gonna make it easy struct container and i'm gonna say over here operator um sorry uh, o stream operator o stream reference os um, ostr and uh, what else i need to do i have over here i'm gonna say const container C and in here I'm gonna say return OSDR C dot M data okay so a very simple thing over here um, it needs copy assignment it does work it doesn't need one um, what else it needs um, a, a copy assignment co uh, insertion and default constructor so it has all of them right now okay so if I create uh, and let me create an assignment operator too so uh, I'm gonna say int operator equal uh, uh, oh, sorry container operator equal container reference or uh, int uh, value and in here I'm gonna say m data set to value okay so very simple thing and here return this so <clears throat> now uh, if I if I run this program with a container instead of a double so what, over here I'm gonna say container and I'm gonna put over here C and let's make uh, four of them okay and uh, in here I'm gonna say C dot size and uh, have C I set to say I plus 10 something like that and and go um, see out C and out because we we overloaded right so let me take this oh I need integer I so if I run this this is what's going to happen So it actually shows the, the thing. Why is it showing four? I have no idea. Oh, because I put four. <laughs> okay, so four of them, right? Uh, are we okay down to this point? Okay, now take a look at this. In here, I'm gonna say container int value. And in here, I'm gonna say m data is set to value. So when I create a constructor, then I am responsible to create the the copy construct the all the, const the the constructors for it. Now, if I compile and run, 
this is what's going to happen. Uh, no appropriate. It comes to here, as you see, it says no appropriate uh, default constructor available because it wants to create an array of containers and it cannot set it to anything. So it's not going to work out. And that's that. But if I put over here is set to 10, then it's going to work perfectly because now it has a default constructor and it runs. Uh, are we okay with this? And that's it. That's our uh, uh, dynamic arrays and our template. And the templates are uh, done. The next time that you're coming into the class, I'm going to take you through templates and... Uh, um, all the topics that we have hopefully we're going to be uh, having a lecture on the next day and uh, come to the uh, level of week four and complete everything up to the end of week four uh, any questions all right Yes, Irish. Uh, it's actually about the workshop too. Okay. So in the reflect question, it asks that describe the approach taken to read the input file. Okay. And is there any way to avoid rereading the file? But as the program runs, the file is read only once. So I'm not sure uh, what the question is asking me to do. To respond exactly that way. Um, exactly. No, uh, respond, I mean, respond that it, that uh, uh, the program reads the file only once. If the question and reflection okay. is wrong, answer it uh, that it's wrong. Okay, sure. Okay, say if, if there's no need for it. So, if, and you can be generous as, but if we needed to read it again, we could have done this and that. Sure. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, I'm I'm gonna try and pronounce your name properly. Busarin or Busarin. You had the question. Yes, I have the question. So the reflection they say the same as me. So, um, do I need to fix my code, or I just answer and then? You because write your code and you answer the reflection based on the code you have written and submitted. That's what reflection mm -hmm. is. There is no right and wrong with this reflection. Reflection is for me to see that you thought about your code and you have an idea about it. Even if your idea is wrong, there is no bad thing about it. You're supposed to be wrong, you're a student. It's oh, only your okay. reflection. It doesn't have to be right answer. It has to be your opinion and I look at it. If it's wrong, I'll tell you that you said something wrong. The action of giving oh. reflection is enough. Okay. Got Thank it? Thank you. All right. Yeah. Any, any other question? Ladies and gents, any other question? I think they have a question in the in chat. The chat. Oh, in the chat. What topics we covered in the quiz? Weeks, uh, uh, okay. Uh, um, Weeks, uh, so each quiz is for the week that it is. So uh, this, uh, you're going to have the, the, the first two quizzes that you're going to have will be quiz week one or two. And the one that you're going to do on the lab, in the lab, is going to be week three. Got it? Iman? All right. Anything else? Quiz three will be in the lab. Quiz one, two will be in person. Uh, uh, um, not in person. Quiz three will be in lab if we have enough time. If I cannot finish the lecture, then I have to do the quiz on uh, that quiz offline too. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to be able to do that quiz in the class. The goal is for it to be in the class, but lecture comes first. If I don't finish the topics, I'm not going to do the quiz. Any other question? 
So let's do this. Any questions, people? Thank you very much. Have yourself a beautiful day, and I'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye. Talk to you later.